For novelist Jonathan Franzen, the future under climate change looks bleak. In September of 2019, Franzen decided to pen an opinion piece for The New Yorker that was filled with despair. The gist of the nearly 3,000 word proclamation was that humanity has no hope of preventing climate change. So we should give up trying to mitigate it and instead accept our fate and adapt to it. Looking at the daily headlines of wildfires and supercharged storms, this is an appealing conclusion. It doesn't ask anything of the reader except to lay down and accept the quote unquote inevitable. Jonathan Franzen's essay is a climate doomerist manifesto through and through, and because of that, he reveals the need for radical hope in the face of the climate crisis. It is precisely in the final hours when the fate of the world seems to be balanced on a razor's edge, with one side drawing us into climate apocalypse and the other pulling us towards a liberatory world, that radical climate optimism is essential to imagining a just path towards climate liberation. Which is why today we will unpack why radical hope is crucial to revolutionary climate action. This video was made possible by the people who support me on Patreon. Get early access to all my videos by becoming an OCC Patreon supporter. Before we can unpack what it means to embrace hope, we must first examine the roots of its opposite, doomerism. Honestly, it's no wonder that climate despair and doomerism can feel so appealing right now. I often feel a sense of despair when I read headlines and do research for these videos. Fossil fuel companies continue to extract and destroy our planet. Natural disasters are getting worse and more frequent. Climate change drives ever more people out of their homes. And the response from most people in power has been to maintain business as usual at any cost. Feeling despair is a very real issue of mental health that is caused and exacerbated by the perceived hopelessness of our current situation. But we have to fight against this trend in climate discourse. Not only is this sense of hopelessness personally challenging to deal with, but it also benefits the status quo. What better way to stymie revolutionary climate action than to crush us into apathy and inaction? Through endless workdays, brutal climate news cycles, and the anxiety of paying this month's rent, there's very little time to imagine what else could be possible outside the walls of capitalism, much less put in the time and energy necessary to build revolutionary potential. As author Ashley C. Ford so eloquently reminds us, the goal of oppressors is to limit your imagination about what is possible without them, so you might never imagine more for yourself and the world you live in. We are trapped inside a cage of of doom and denial constructed by the ecocidal capitalist class. And the only way out is to imagine something different, to pay attention to the true revolutionary winds that have taken place across the earth, and to foster a sense of radical hope. Holding on to hope in times of despair is a radical act. I don't mean pie-in-the-sky hope that ignores everything bad in the world and waits for some savior to magically fix everything. The kind of hope I'm referring to is one that doesn't ignore the bad. It doesn't ignore the systems of oppression that surround us and crush us. It doesn't ignore the chokehold that the fossil fuel industry has on the world. No. It looks all these destructive systems in the eye and in defiance embraces a different world of liberation and ecological harmony. As organizer, abolitionist, and author Miriam Kaba asserts, hope is a discipline, adding in a podcast that Hope doesn't preclude feeling sadness or frustration or anger or any other emotion that makes total sense. In short, radical hope means embracing the very real emotions that come with defeats or living under a racist, patriarchal, ecocidal, capitalist system and having the courage to channel them into a future that's brighter. Climate change is not inevitable like Jonathan Franzen seems to think it is. If we descend into apathy and let doom take over, then yes, climate change will be inevitable. But if we foster hope, if we imagine what could be and struggle to make that world a reality, then collectively we can build a better world. The outlooks of both a life under capitalism and the timeline of the climate crisis are admittedly bleak. But if we admit defeat before we even begin, then we've already lost. The climate movement desperately needs revolutionary optimism. It needs radical hope. Because to shape the world for the better, as scholar and activist Angela Davis asserts, you have to act as if it were possible to radically transform the world, and you have to do it all the time. 
Stepping up onto a podium, Vladimir Lenin readied himself to speak in front of a crowd of young workers in Zurich. The day was January 22nd, 1917, the 12-year anniversary of Russia's Bloody Sunday, when Imperial soldiers fired on unarmed protesters and uprisings shook the country. As Lenin addressed the crowd that day in 1917, he looked back on Russia's 1905 revolt and told the Zurich workers that the power of change lay in the hands of the working class. And he ended his speech with a proclamation. A successful revolution would come, but he would probably not be around to see it. A mere two months later, the first of the 1917 revolutions seized Russia, and the Tsar abdicated his throne. In a span of two months, Lenin went from believing he would not see the revolution in his lifetime to witnessing it with his very eyes. The history of change is one of fits and starts, which is why fostering radical hope is essential in dark times. Because, after all, revolution could be right around the corner. Angela Davis is a prime example of revolutionary hope. After living through the Jim Crow South, witnessing her childhood neighbors torn apart by a white supremacist terrorist bombing, and then being hunted by the federal government for buying guns that were used to kill a judge, and living through decades of political regimes that silenced and oppressed people of color, Davis says she is more hopeful than ever today. The uprisings of 2020 that tie their lineage back to struggles when Davis was still young, and the revolutionary fervor of young people today make her believe that transformation is coming. Even through intensely dark times, Davis has held out hope. This is the kind of radical hope that the climate movement needs. Indeed, there are many reasons to be hopeful when it comes to the climate. The rumblings of change have already begun. From the successful defeat of the Keystone XL and Dakota Access Pipelines at the hands of indigenous water protectors, to the mass student and direct action campaigns across the world, to global divestment campaigns siphoning money from oil corporations, grassroots actions are successfully obstructing the fossil fuel industry every step of the way. Combining that with the toll of the pandemic, scholars, journalists, and even a fossil fuel company says that demand for oil peaked in 2019 and will continue to fall until it eventually becomes obsolete. On top of that, the potential of current wind and solar technologies exceeds global demand by a factor of 100, according to a report by Carbon Tracker, which means that we have almost all the tools we need to make a just zero carbon world. And if the massive climate protests around the world are any indicator, the will to create that world is growing stronger by the day. Ultimately, the climate crisis and the pandemic are exposing the cracks in the system, and uprisings around the world are making those cracks wider. We are beginning to break out of the cages of capitalism. But remember, the struggle towards justice and liberation of both people and nature is a history that ebbs and flows. Defeats are plentiful, yes, but so too are victories. What if we saw the construction of another oil pipeline or the opening of a new prison complex not as movement-ending defeats, but instead opening skirmishes in the broader course of revolutionary change? Radical hope demands we take the long view, because as Lenin reminds us, there are decades when nothing happens, and there are weeks when decades happen. Everything can change in an instant, so we must be ready to turn our imagined worlds into a reality the moment it does. Imagine a world that looks a lot more like Wakanda than the suburban sprawl of the United States. Imagine a world without cars where streets are green highways and farms. Imagine a world without the constant 9-to-5 grind of a job you hate. Imagine a decolonized, anti-racist, fossil fuel-free world. How do those worlds feel? You might think these worlds are science fiction. But as author and activist Adrienne Marie Brown writes, I believe that all organizing is science fiction, that we are shaping the future we long for and have not yet experienced. I believe that we are in an imagination battle. Imagining better worlds and then figuring out how to create that world, even in a small way, is essential to fostering radical hope. Because hope is active. It looks like the work of artists who rented out parking spots on the streets of San Francisco to envision what the city without cars would look like. It looks like the renderings of solar punk artists who show us a world that blends nature with humanity. 
It looks like the land back movement. Hope requires imagination, and radical action requires hope. So if you're an artist, if you're an activist, a storyteller, or a dreamer, keep doing what you do. The struggle is constant, but there will always be light in the dark, especially if we can dream and hope for a better world together. Unfortunately, videos like these, while very important, do terribly with the YouTube algorithm and sponsors don't want to touch them. But there is a way you can help. Becoming an OCC Patreon supporter helps our changing climate stay afloat and independent. As an OCC patron, you'll not only gain early access to videos, but also special behind the scenes updates and a members only Discord channel. In addition, each month, my supporters vote on an environmental group that I then donate a portion of my monthly revenue to. Patreon supporters are the financial backbone of the Our Changing Climate operation. Without them, I wouldn't be able to take creative risks and dive into difficult topics. So if you want to help keep this channel alive or are feeling generous, head over to patreon.com slash rchangingclimate or use the link in the description and become an OCC patron. If you're not interested or aren't financially able to, then no worries. You can help the channel out by subscribing, liking the video, and commenting. I hope you all enjoyed the video and I will see you in two weeks.